we've been doing a lot of hydraulic upgrades for the past year or so. One recurring question we get, Matt, is are these hydraulic upgrades gonna cause us to overheat our hydraulic system? Specifically, we got a couple of units here. We've got the uh, Summit hydraulic up, upgrade kit that we put on the back, and then we've got a Hydros Plus improved hydraulic pump. We've got something to measure this. My friend Matt's here today. Hello. And he's gonna help us install a oil temperature gauge on both 1025Rs so that we can, well, learn more. Yeah, get some information, get some data. Figure out what temperatures are and figure out what they should be and how hot's too hot. Let's get started. Matt's put together this, I'll call it a kit. It's not a kit that's available for purchase yet, but uh, it comes with an oil temperature gauge and it modifies one of these hydraulic tubes. This is the hydraulic inlet, right Matt? It goes right down here between the sump and the pump. Right, so it's on the intake side, it's not under pressure. In fact, it's about the only place that you could really put a... That or drain the tank. Yeah, okay. It's the only, because you really can't have the, the temperature sensor under pressure. So he's, he's welded a little piece on the intake tube here. And uh, what'd you call that, a bung? It's a NPT bung. Okay, and then this is where the temperature sensor goes in. On the other end, which is gonna be up on the dash, is the gauge. Well, that's the main two pieces to the whole thing. That's, that's it, it's simple, <laughs> plain and simple. It does require the modified uh, suction tube, which is the piece that you're holding. Yeah, this uh, is the trick right here. And that's the reason it's not a kit yet, because getting those parts are very difficult right now, if not impossible. Part number LVA19234 cannot be ordered right now from greenpartsstore.com, even with coupon code TTWT. Um, hopefully the supply issues will fix that, otherwise we may have to try to source it somewhere else. One question I would have for you guys, are you interested in such a kit? Um, it, it's, it's this piece, it's the gauge, it will be a bracket to mount the gauge, and what else? Uh, all the work required installation stuff. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a back to this. Uh, to make it look a little... A gauge mounting pod. Estimated price right now is about $300. So if you'd be interested in a $300 commitment to know your oil temperature, you only need to let us know in the comments section and that'll kind of help you to know how much motivation to... To put into getting tubes made. Yeah, because uh, this is the hardest part right here is this bung putting it on the tube. You welded these yourself, right? Yes, sir. And I actually have a video of how I did that. Yeah, check out Matt's channel. What is the name it of your channel? It is Maker Breaker Fixer. You've, already, you've even got a shirt already. I even have a shirt. Just, just launched uh, yesterday, actually. Got a couple of videos up. Got enough video footage for about four or five more videos at this point. Just haven't had time to edit them. You haven't started panicking yet about trying to figure out what your next content is. No, I haven't. Because <laughs> I, 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 I need to spend more time editing than I do making content. <laughs> Now, if you're looking close, you'll notice this is not Johnny X. This actually doesn't have the hydrosplus.com kit on it. But that's part of the deal here, Matt. We're gonna try to put this uh, temperature gauge on both tractors so that we can kind of know whether there's any difference between the two, right? Um, it's, gonna, it's still gonna be hard, I think, to judge because we're not gonna have both tractors on the same application at the same time. But hopefully, as I run them both, over the longer term. Maybe we'll have some actual data points to use and Yeah, it'll still compare. be anecdotal. Now you've been running one of these on your system for a long time, Correct. right? I have a, an early 2017, so it's got the 260 and the one or the H120 loader. Okay. Um, I've got about 100 hours on the, the kit itself. And aside from a little bit of growing pains and wearing hydraulic fluid a few times but through my own fault, um, it's been very reliable. And the data points that I've gotten are it operates about 100 degrees above ambient under load, 100, uh, 110 degrees above ambient temperature. Under load. Under, under load. Uh, not under load. It, it cools off fairly quickly and 
you know, 30, 40, 50, 60 degrees above ambient, depending on ambient, I'd say. Okay. Uh, the temperature gauge starts at 100 uh, degrees. And this winter, I think I've seen it over 100 degrees at like 110 once. So it, it's, it's very rare, but that's plowing snow, which isn't substantial load either. It's just plowing, not blowing. Okay. So. Okay. So when you consider load, uh, when you're seeing it higher, um, full PTO, cutting grass with a material collection system, tractor somewhere between 3,000 and 3,500 pounds of total weight um, is what I'm talking about. Load. So full mid-mount mower, and then you've got a pull type? Uh, three-point mounted. A uh, three-point mounted, but still a separate engine on your yeah, separate MCS. Engine. Yep. And, uh, and then you've got weights on the front to yep. compensate for that. Exactly. And so it's, it's, it's a it's full It's a heavy load. tractor. And then what you're saying is a little bit of a hill a little bit of a hill and you start to see performance decline each time you go back up that hill, even allowing for what would be cooling uh, going down the hill to come back up again. So that was kind of the premise behind it is I was starting to see temperature, uh, I guess, performance decreases. And I was curious as to the process and did some reading and research and learned that when hydraulic fluid gets above unknown certain temperatures, it starts to lose performance. And okay. that's essentially. You're seeing that with a stock system. Correct. That's before you added any summit that or was, any, you don't have yeah. high, okay. So you were seeing, and you could actually notice a performance degradation. Yep. Well, no, so I did have the summit kit because the rear MCS does have a requirement for hydraulics. Okay. Um, but the performance degradation was first experienced actually using the backhoe digging out a stump. And that was before the summit kit. That was the first time I experienced the, uh, the, the performance degradation with overheated or heated, superheated uh, hydraulic oil. And then I started to experience it again when I got later into the mowing season when ambient okay. temperatures were above 85. Okay. So. And you've done further testing now um, with the Summit Kit. Correct. Does it, are you seeing an increase in temperature because of having the extra Summit Kit? Not really. Um, in fact, the Summit Kit seems to provide a little bit of additional cooling. Interesting. Um, the, the, it's a large aluminum block, as, as those of us that have it are aware, and that aluminum block does dissipate heat very well. So with the Summit Kit installed, I've actually seen that it takes longer to get to temperature. It'll still eventually reach the point that it loses power, but it get, takes a little bit longer to get there as a result because this is a nice big old heat sink. Okay. So. Well, that's interesting. So you, in, in your testing so far, the Summit has not increased the heat. Definitively, probably not. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. I like that. Definitively, probably, probably not. not. <laughs> well, a lot of this stuff is anecdotal. We can't. Yep. We can't help it. I mean, we, we. The majority of this testing is done with a, a sample size of one, right. or in the case of Kevin at Hydros Plus, a sample size of two or three. But he's got a, a bunch more kits installed at this point. Um, but for the most part, all of our testing and fault tolerance and trying to find the failures or not trying to find them, but trying to prevent the failures is on a sample of one and you only have as good as a sample is, so. He mentioned Kevin from Hydros Plus. What, what yep. we're doing here is, is you've provided a kit to him. He's Correct. just got it installed. He's provided a yep. kit to you. And so you've just now got your yep. Hydros Plus installed. We then will have one on my machine. We will have at least a sample size of three. And a stock. And a stock, yeah. So uh, we're going to hopefully, we'll work together and we'll try to provide you updates on, on what we learn as far as heat. Uh, it certainly seems likely that with the highest end Hydros Plus, we could be generating more heat, but we don't know that, right? We know that the oil cooler on a 1025R is pretty amazing for a subcompact tractor. Uh, none of the competitors that we know of have an oil cooler at all. That I know of, I don't know of any. I don't in, know. In the sub-series. Right, in the sub usually they have that fan that just kind of blows back on the whole uh, hydraulic, the aluminum housing. Yep. Uh, so, so the 1025R is definitely over-equipped for a stock standpoint. In theory. <laughs> <laughs> I decided while Matt was working, it was a good time to put on my heavy hitch two inch receiver bracket. Matt, do you have one of these? I do not. Um, I do have the double weight bracket from heavy hitch and the front weight bracket, but I don't have a... Well, this, this thing works really well, especially if you're gonna be pulling stuff. It's definitely solid with welds that are about a thousand times better than mine. <laughs> Very good welds. And to my knowledge, they are manually welded. If that's manually uh, welded, then I need to really work on my skills. They do a fabulous job and the powder coating they do is, is equally fabulous. 
Um, so yeah, I'm very impressed with their products. I've got to agree uh, with the weight cart, the weight bracket that I've got, it certainly is some good stuff. But what I like about this is by being a two inch receiver, I can put a, either a standard draw bar or a ball. Yep. You know, it's just, there's just a, a hook. They've a got hook. a, they've yep. got one with a hook. Um, and it, it, it still fits with the backhoe, fits with all the PTO covering and everything. By the way, here's what you've got so far. Yep. Yeah. And the, the torque spec on those is good and tight. Good and tight. Good yeah, and it's tight. German. Good, yeah. Um, but uh, actually, the torque spec on these things, I think, is pretty high. It's like 223 or something on. Those yeah, I, and I'm 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 not sure unless it's because the ROPS. I mean, why why is it such a big deal? But even then, it doesn't. I don't know. Maybe it's ROPS or subframe potentially for the backhoe. But no, and this I isn't. just can't see that it's that. You wouldn't think it would be that major. Slow and gentle hole because we don't want to drill into the ICC. And then the actual screw that holds it in will put threads in the hole that I'm making and make the hole a little bit bigger. Take all the angle we can take. Yeah, that'll be good. Yeah. Okay, that's yeah. enough angle. Yeah, I think that's gonna work out nicely. Well, that's one down, Matt. Yeah, wasn't too bad. No. A little bit of growing pains. It's been a while since I've actually put one all the way on. <laughs> Yeah, well, there's really not, not that much to it. No, the, it's um, just getting the, uh, the the cables run underneath so that they don't interfere with anything. Mm -hmm. And planning Sometimes. things out so that you get everything where you want it. Yeah, we did a little different uh, location than yep. what you did on yours. We put ours on the left-hand side Which here. Which I like better. Camera can't see it from that angle, but uh, we use this new 12-volt uh, accessory plug on this tractor, Matt, what did you think of it? It was convenient. Um, it certainly made finding 12 volt power that was switched much easier. Yeah, it's uh, got three three posts on it. We've got ground positive and switched positive. So when the ignition turns on, the switched positive gives you 12 volts, which is what we want for the um, temp gauge because you don't want it always on running the battery down. Yeah, this is an option you can buy when you get your tractor. It's also an add-on that you can put on after the fact. I'll put a link to the part number in the description from greenpartstore.com. Maker, breaker, fixer. Which, which are you doing right now? <laughs> to be determined. Well, given, given the uh, incontinence I'm seeing in the tractor right now, I would say- I'd say breaker. <laughs> breaker. <laughs> <laughs> However, it went as planned. Old one is out. There you are, thank you. I'm having to watch him really closely, Christy. He's uh, trying to get away with my Nipex. Yep, these things are fantastic. They might be coming home with me if I can figure out a way to sneak them out the door. I'm gonna watch him close. Amazon.com slash shop slash tractor time with 10. And you can get a set delivered to you tomorrow. Uh, or well, maybe think, Monday. I think I've already asked Alexa to buy them for me. <laughs> <laughs> then you throw mine in the trash. Mm -hmm. Matt, I need a little calibration here. I think I've heard you say that you had some performance loss. Yep, so as the hydraulic oil heats up, um, it seems like it almost loses a little bit of its punch to a certain point, but it, it's gotta get over an arbitrary number, and I'm, I'm gonna go with 210, 205 degrees uh, Fahrenheit is about where I've noticed that the performance starts to degrade. Well, what do you mean performance degrades? So with the backhoe, you don't have the same muscle. It doesn't, okay. it doesn't wanna pull as hard, it doesn't wanna dig as hard, it just doesn't seem to have the same pull. Or for example, mowing with the MCS on the back and weights on the front, going up a hill, normally no problems, but when it gets too warm, the going up the hill, it starts to get sluggish, almost like a clutch slipping in a car going up. Interesting. So do you hear a squeal or anything like the hydrostat squealing? No, it doesn't make any new noise. It just doesn't have the same feel. It, it's, it's noticeably sluggish. Okay. Now, how long does it take you to get that hot if you've, if you've had that with your MCS and everything? Uh, with you know, cutting grass, 95 degrees, 90 degrees outside, it doesn't take too long to get up to that point but at the same time, it doesn't take long to cool off. It, it, going down the hill, back up the hill, down the hill, back up the hill. As you get further along that hill, as you're going up and down, it certainly gets worse and worse 
and stopping for two minutes or to dump the MCS, for example, solves the problem and then you build back up again. So the oil cooler is working and working well, sounds like. It just, it's just, it, it's a full load for the tractor between yep. the mid PTO, pulling something, the weights, Maybe a couple too many cheeseburgers. Potentially, that, that's uh, what they could do. Maybe it. that's what you know. I mean, it it really does. It, it puts too much on it. Now we're flatlanders here, so I may not experience that, but maybe I could hook Christy on the back and drag her around. I wouldn't do that. Okay. What? I don't. Think I that's... think that would make something hot. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, it might not be the be tractor. Do <laughs> you have a good couch? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I don't see one in here. <laughs> no, this gauge, this gauge looks really good. I mean, you mounted this on the left side here, and you put yours on the right side. Yep, which is nice when you have the second chance to do it again, because I like that mounting better. I like it too. Uh, you had a limited space on the right side because of the throttle. Yep, the throttle and also the single point connector mix getting the right hand engine cowling off. I think we've shown that in the, in the past, uh, that it's hard to get the, the engine, you call it a cowling, that's really a great cowling. name. Anyway, the engine side panel off, and uh, with, if we were gonna put that gauge here, it, it, you need to slide it upward because there's no way to come outward with it. And so that's, that's why we went to the, to the left-hand side, but I actually think it's, it worked better there. I like it better over there. Matt, you've been here all day. This has been a lot of fun. It has, I've really enjoyed it. So, Tom Sawyer again? No. We're thinking, Matt is thinking, about making this a product. So again, leave your comments below if, if you would be interested. Of course, it won't be incredibly inexpensive. The, the welding that needs to be done on that uh, in, intake line is going to be something that we have to deal with. We can't get the parts right now, but if you would be interested, somewhere between $275 and $300 for one of these temperature gauges, let us know in the comments section. Meanwhile, we'll try to report back um, both Myself, Matt, and Kevin from Hydros Plus will have these gauges and we'll be able to kind of test with the Summit kit. You have the Summit and the Hydros Plus. Yep. Which Hydros Plus do you have? I am not sure. Okay. Hydrosplus.com, coupon code TTWT, uh, summit-hydraulics.com slash TTWT, and then you can use code TTWT for 5% off on all these products. We're pretty excited about this. It, it seems to bring the 1025R to the next level. Now let's just clarify one more time. You're seeing the performance problem before you did any of these upgrades. Correct. So, and the, and the Summit kit actually seemed to reduce the temperature a little bit because of the big aluminum block. Correct. The, uh, the Summit kit actually seems to bring or hold the temperature down a little bit longer while the Summit kit's installed. Folks, I hope you've enjoyed this as much as Matt and I have enjoyed the day. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time on, on Tractor, Tractor Time, time with, with Tim. Tim. The wise fear the Lord and shun evil, but a fool is hot-headed and yet feels secure. How hot's too hot? I'm trying not to break anything. <laughs>